Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Warm greetings from Bose Institute. The 30th November is the foundation day of Bose Institute, and it is also the birthday of our illustrious founder, the doyen of Indian science, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose. Every year, we mark this special day with a memorial lecture in the name of the Acharya. Today is the 105th foundation day of this institute and the 163rd birth anniversary of Acharya J.C. Bose. It is our tradition to start the program with an invocation. This song that you are about to hear is woven into the tradition of Bose Institute as it was written by none other than Kobi Guru Rabindranath Thakur in 1917 to mark the inception of this institute. We will now play a recorded version of the invocation sung by the students of Bose Institute. We will now commence with today's main event, the 82nd Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose Memorial Lecture. We are very honored to have with us today as our speaker, the distinguished chemist, Professor Gautam Radhakrishna Desi Raju from the Solid State and Structural Chemistry Unit of the Indian Institute of Science. Sir, the entire Bose Institute community Sincerely thank you for accepting our invitation to be here with us today. I request Professor Udoy Bondopadhyay, Director Bose Institute, to kindly deliver his welcome address and present the director's report. Sir. Professor Gautam Adesi Raju, Professor Sobhusachi Sarkar, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, my dear colleagues and students, a very good afternoon. 
on this very auspicious occasion to mark the 105th Foundation Day of Bose Institute, I, on behalf of all my colleagues of this institute, extend a very warm welcome to all of you. It is needless to mention that this type of ceremony inspires and also reminds the scientists and students for conducting science to fulfill the objective set by our legendary founder Acharya, Jagadish Chandra Bose, that is, to generate and disseminate knowledge freely to the benefit of the mankind. Another aspect I'd like to mention that this kind of association, irrespective of different scientific fraternities, undoubtedly develops a great sense of fellow feeling and togetherness as we have significantly become successful to overcome stressful period of COVID-19. I'm delighted to let you know that this year, Professor Gautam R. Deshi Raju, Honorary Professor Solid State and Structural Chemistry Unit, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, will deliver 82nd Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture. I take immense pleasure to intimate you that he has kindly accepted this invitation and he will not accept any another EM customarily associated for delivering this lecture. I sincerely acknowledge his generosity. I'm also grateful to Professor Sobosachi Sarka, former senior professor and head chemistry division IIT Kanpur and honorary professors Nanoscience and Synthetic Leaf Laboratory at Downing Hall, IIEST Sibbur, for giving his consent to preside over this prestigious event. I'm sure that you will definitely enjoy this lecture. Now, I would like to submit a brief report on some of the glimpses of overall activities of Bose Institute. First, shifting to the unified campus of Bose Institute. I'm very much delighted to share this good news. We have successfully shifted to our unified academic campus at Salt Lake Sector 5 on 14th of July, 2021. Henceforth, all administrative and major academic activities will be accomplished from this new campus. Shifting to our new campus was really a long dream for us. And ultimately, we have translated this dream into practice, overcoming so many hurdles, including COVID-19 and the pandemic situations. Though, 100% shifting has not been occurred, but I am very much optimistic that within a short period, we will be able to complete the shifting process. I'm thankful to Department of Science and Technology Government of India for extending generous support by providing funds for shifting to UASC. I would like to place some information related to overall academic performance 2020-21. So we have, have total publication for 2020-21 is 258. Average impact factor is 4.23. Book chapters and review article published 20. PhD awarded 17. Number of manpower produced 16. Number of seminar training conferences workshops 11. The financial status for the year 2020 and 21. We received from DST 97.42 crores. We have generated extramural fund by efficient writing project by your faculties, that is 36.05 crore. Number of ongoing extramural projects, 57. Average extramural projects per faculty is 1.50. Now, I'd like to focus and inform you, or better submit you, major research accomplishment 2020-21. Bose Institute is responsible for coordinating the Indian contribution towards the construction of facility for anti-proton and ion research at Darmstadt, Germany, and subsequent participation of Indian institutes or universities in the experiments. To that end, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India has sanctioned 615 crore to Bose Institute for the duration of 2021 and 26. 22 ultra vacuum chambers produced under the supervision of Bose Institute by Vacuum Technics Private Limited Bangalore were flagged off to the facility for anti-proton ion research at Darmstadt, Germany on 10th of November 2020 in a brief ceremony at VT Complex, Bangalore. West Bengal Pollution Control Board in association with Bose Institute, Department of Environment, Department of Urban Development and Municipal Affairs organized International Day of Clean Air for Blue Sky on September 7, 20, 2021. 
On that day, more was exchanged between Bose Institute and West Bengal Pollution Control Board and Kolkata Municipal Corporation for National Clean Air Program for Calcutta. I would like to highlight some major accomplishments of Bose Institute, which are focused in the areas of neurodegenerative disorders, cancers, infectious diseases, environmental science and microbiology, bioinformatics, plant and agricultural sciences, physical sciences, and of course, COVID-19 specific studies. Significant progress has been achieved towards uncovering key mechanisms of brain disorders towards possible identification of future therapeutic targets. We contributed significantly on the identification of key biomolecules playing critical role in carcinogenesis as potential future anti-cancer targets. Potential dark targets against infectious disease such as tuberculosis, impact of air pollution on the low-lying clouds over eastern Himalaya, development of interspecific hybrid system, characterization of quantum teleportation using two qubit states, computer-based approach for identification of FDA-approved drugs for possible repurposing against COVID-19, formulation of cost-effective thermostable insulin. We have also set some future goals, so I'd like to focus to you also. Future goals are as follows. Understanding plant intelligence and information processing in response to environmental stimuli, unraveling the inherent complexities in key cellular processes and their implications in disease biology, exploring microbiomes to reveal biosphere functions, manage pollution and improve lives, employing multimodal approaches to understand pathogen biology and host pathogen interactions for designing novel intervention strategies against infectious diseases, developing and deploying computational tools, data mining databases, management and statistical analysis for a holistic understanding of stem cell bioinformatics and regulatory RNAs, oncogenomics, proteomics, drug design, structural bioinformatics, and macromolecular dynamics for application in healthcare. Application of submicron physics to understand microphysics, universe to biological systems, microscopic origin of elementary matter in the universe, microscopic processes in natural environment, mesoscopic systems, light matter interactions, microscopic systems, quantum information in many body systems, entanglement properties, and quantum network. I think it's not wise to dilute the eagerness of the audience after talking anymore and judging the gravity and interest of J.C. Bo's memorial lecture, particularly when it will be delivered by scientists like Professor Gautam or Desiraju, I'm finishing my address. Thanks for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor Bondupadhyay. We are very fortunate to have with us today Professor Shobhoshachi Shorkar, an eminent chemist and educationist who has kindly consented to chair today's lecture. Professor Shorkar, as you've heard from our director, is currently an honorary visiting professor at the Indian Institute of Engineering Science and Technology at Shibpur. Prior to that, he superannuated as senior professor and head of the chemistry department of Indian Institute of Technology at Kanpur. His teaching and research career span over 50 years. His research interests are not only diverse, but they're also very intriguing. They include unraveling the architectural secrets of the silk cocoon and understanding how anthropogenic nanocarbon in aerosols contribute to global climate change. He has explored the use of low cost nanocarbon to combat RNA viruses and has also designed a synthetic leaf. Professor Sharkar has guided 46 PhD students. He has close to 300 research publications in refereed journals. He has many patents, which include five in the US, one in the European Union, one in China, and three in India. In addition to being a prolific researcher, he has also written popular scientific articles in both English and Bengali. 
He even writes short stories in Bengali. I now request the chair, Professor Shobhushachi Shorkar, to preside over the 82nd Acharjo Jagadish Chandra Bose Memorial Lecture and kindly introduce our speaker, Professor Gautam Desiraju. Professor Shorkar, sir. Thank you, Professor Shorkar, for this brief introduction. And I'm delighted today uh, to introduce today's speaker for Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture, uh, Professor Gautam Deshi Raju, uh, about his um, little bit of bio data, which I, I knew. He did his uh, BSc from University of Bombay in 1972, then did his PhD in the one of the oldest university in Illinois at Urban Champaign in 1976. He started his career at Hyderabad and stayed there for a long time and then moved finally to uh, Institute of Science Bangalore as a solid state and structural chemistry unit, but still he is there. The most interesting aspect of Professor Desi Raju is to deal with a particular type of bond. Normally, chemists they uh, simply say hydrogen bond. Now, it has something spectacular to do that Professor Desi Raju unravelled completely that this is the essence of life. This is the use by which one can deliberately synthesize, create a drug molecule with good effectiveness. And so he has published that enormous amount of uh, different research paper, uh, particularly some very well read books. These books, which which is very much interesting to read about the hydrogen bond in structural chemistry and biology. And he is now in the editorial or advisory boards of several very reputed journals, particularly with the, in, in, in the International Union of Crystallography, Anguante Giving, Journal of the American Chemical Society, and chemical communication is a prolific high rated scientist with a citation index exceeding 60,000 with H index is 95. That speaks about uh, his, his research contribution. Also in the international awards, he received several, that is to name a few, Alexander von Humboldt, Fortune's Prize and to us award in chemistry, is past president of the International Union of Crystallography, he is a recipient of honorary doctorate degree of the University Nazionale di Cordoba, Argentina, and Royal Sema University, Canoe. He was also awarded Acharya Profilic and the Ray Medal of the University of Calcutta for science and technology an ISA Medal of Science from the University of Bologna. So this is some of the brief thing. Today, he would be delivering the lecture and the name of Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture. The topic is science and society, what Bose Institute on them. Professor, this is sir, please. Thank you very much, Professor Sarkar, for these kind words of introduction. I am deeply honored to the Bose Institute for having asked me to deliver the 82nd Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture. This afternoon, 
I am told I have 45 minutes. 45 minutes is a good time for an academic because by instinct, we know how to stop at 45 minutes because that is the duration of the lectures that we give to students throughout our life. So 45 is a very comforting and comfortable time. So don't worry, I will finish exactly in 45 minutes. See, this whole matter of science, society, science, unlike what general public seems to think, you know, we don't sit in ivory towers. Some of the greatest scientific discoveries in the world, recent modern world, have come from pressing societal needs or industrial needs or commercial needs. I am a chemist, so I will give you examples from chemistry. I mean, Louis Pasteur did not start out saying that I would discover stereochemistry. He was asked by the French wine industry to solve an immediate problem that was almost making them bankrupt. Because Something strange was happening to their wines and it was turning bitter. So Buster was what you would call a consultant. He came there and of course the rest is history. He found the hemihedral crystals and so on and so on. Take Heber's process for the fixation of nitrogen without which this planet would not sustain 8 billion people. The BASF company in Ludwigshafen had a real problem because around that time, because of World War I, Germany's supply of saltpeter from Chile was cut off by the Allies. So this sodium nitrate was an essential constituent of fertilizers. So Heber came there and then again the rest is history. So, you, you cannot separate, you know, science and society. You know, Bose himself was living and working in a period where our country was undergoing a total ferment, manthan, you can call it. In particular, he lived in Bengal, which was at the forefront of this manthan. Because don't forget, Bengal was the place where the British came almost first. They stay among all the parts of India. Bengal was the place where they stayed the longest. And so it was the people of Bengal who saw the British first at close quarters. More or less directly after 1757. And then of course you had 1858 and so the people of Bengal, and now I mean the entire undivided province because Bose came from a small place called Maiman Singh in what is now Bangladesh. And Bengal itself saw the best and the worst of the English much more acutely, I would say, than any other part of India. And many of the glorious things, the trials, the tribulations, the problems of Bengal can be traced back to this lengthy British occupation of that province, finally ending of course in partition. So there is another Bengal there which is very much like you guys. We all know that. 
So it was not, it was not just Bose, it was so many people, you know, Ram Mohan Roy, Mahindralal Sarkar, if you want to take the world of science, Tagore himself. So Tagore writes, you know, Ghare Bhaire. He is not just home in the world, he is not the, the, the love triangle which he describes there, but it is a very, very general issue and Bengal, you know, what this has led to them and which explains much of Bose's work, the thing that drove him from the pit of his stomach, the tension between thought and action, I think is a feature of Bengal that you don't see so much of that in other places. I was born and raised in two presidency cities, Madras first and then Bombay. So I think I can speak with a fair degree of confidence. This tension between thought and action that you see in, in Calcutta, you don't see in these places. I reason for that, I don't know. Probably it is because of this. So by thought, I mean, what is going on? Are these British fellows good or bad? And then the action, what do we do about it? I mean, after some time, especially after 1858, I think everybody realized that pretty much this was no good. History doesn't, what happens to a people, the fate of the people doesn't get decided in five years, ten years. Some fellow coming, some fellow going, some minister, cabinet, Twitter, Facebook. These things don't decide, you know, it is these very big historical events. And we scientists are also part of society, we are part of the public, you know, you don't, please don't keep us outside somewhere and say that, you know, you guys are separate, wearing some white coats and roaming around. You know, we are all not like Dr. Fauci. So, I think both was he. Stay. He himself was in the state of tension and if you, the other thing about Bose is that he viewed science as a bridge between faith and reason. Where is the question of faith in science? Reason you can understand. Where is this faith thing coming in? Ha! Huh. This is where the other big thing, he felt that science was neither belonging to the West or to the East. The idea of science being international is something that was very, very close to Bose's heart. And uh, he then viewed India as a very unique country to further the progress of really high level science, huh? not this, you know, kachra imitative things that we see today, really high level. What do I mean? I mean, look at his own work. This man was able to go straight from physics to physiology, very seamlessly. You can't understand something like that. So when he says that, he, he always said he favored general education as compared to specialist education. Here I tend to differ a little with Bose. And this brings me to another point. We can and must differ with great people, however great they may be, and not simply Worship them. I think, I think Dr. Ambedkar said the same thing on 26th January 1949, Constitution Day, which was just four days ago. The very last debate, he said that there was a tendency in India to worship people. And he said that 
this should not happen in india he 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 said that it was always a tendency to worship big political leaders he said that that was a universal thing but he said that in india it was a special problem because this worshiping things it comes very close to this bhakti cult which is steeped into our religion he he made a very stern speech you know anybody would think ambedkar would be very happy that the whole thing was over and his you know 2 years 11 month 18 day odyssey was finally coming to an end but no he was even very critical he was almost rather brooding and introspective in that last speech he said don't do it don't worship people and we do tend to do that you know let's not ever forget that so much so that in the world of science this has worked seriously to our detriment so we worship people everywhere we worship amitabh bachchan we worship sachin tendulkar see these people are all excellent in their fields nobody is denying that but i'm sure beyond a point if you actually went near some of them they will say we wish more people were like us you go and you know tendulkar actually says something you know that famous advertisement i have got visa you go get it that you go get it he is actually saying you know you go and play cricket like me that's what bose would have liked bose would have liked to see some half a dozen jc boses so this is something i think we scientists in general should watch for and scientists obviously in the bose institute as well because your founder never approved of all this you know he also said we need the east we need the west his whole point actually is that and this is the point of bengal also in those tumultuous years 1858 to 1947 shall we say what is it of the west that we should take and what is it of the east that we should keep i think japan and china have solved this issue much better than india you know we have after 47 you know we sort of run around sometimes we you know when i look at these things i feel that we have discarded the best of what is ours and we have taken the worst of what is theirs you know as professor sarkar said i had my formative education in bombay and illinois bombay itself is it is not an indian city i mean firstly it's not a maharashtrian city at all it's not an indian city it's a world city so i view myself as very very fortunate that i grew up in that great mumbai you know because when i went to the usa you know i never felt strange i never felt funny and there is a certain attitude and bent of mind that the usa gives also and one of these it helps you to answer this question between thought and action which was plaguing boss maybe if boss knew more about america and less of england maybe he would have been able to answer this question now i first started off by saying i disagree with boss about this general and special because that general special to general only somebody like jc boss or maybe g n ramchandran could do ramchandran similarly went from physics to biology without touching chemistry in the middle which is impossible actually the most famous biologists in the west have been chemists so to go from physics to biology is not possible only ramchandran could do it so similarly you know physics to physiology nobody else can do it so bose was talking about himself he was not talking about many other scientists today the world has 
become the place it is in 2021 where the special is very important. Make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen. Today, in science, for big money, for big commerce, for major economic things that lead from science, the devil is in the details. If you avoid thinking about these details and just sort of have a general sort of feel good feeling about science and science is very good and so on. That is not going to take you anywhere. This is what the Chinese are teaching us. They had a civilization like ours. They never lost it. They went through so many types of changes in the last 50 to 60 years. There was an imperial China, then there was Sun Yat-sen's China and then there was a period of uncertainty, then Chiang Kai-shek then Mao Zedong and all his fellows and then the famous, the greatest of all of them, Deng Xiaoping, who told us all about these cats and their color, black and white cats and everything. But through all these changes, China never lost its civilizational moorings. Never. We seem to be ready to lose it all the time. We would be a disappointment to boast today. So when he sees us all, when he sees me giving this lecture and we see, he says, what the hell are you fellows doing? Why aren't you sitting in the lab and doing the experiment? Why are you coming and talking about how to do it? You go and do it first. We need more of action today. There is too little action too much talk, too much of social media, too much of TV debates. They should all be stopped, by the way, especially the English language TV debate. You can close them all down. They are causing so much loss to national productivity and the national exchequer. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is not freedom of speech. This is you know, rubbish of speech. It is degrading all of us, our brains, that is. That is the part that really should not be degraded. And all sorts of things are going on today. Society is also in a churn. This means the country itself is struggling. What do scientists do in an atmosphere like this? You bring, a scientist has to bring some order, rationality, discipline. Again, this East and West. See, one of the greatest things that Indians could do in science, international science, is that the Indians are the best in the world at taking a mass of uncoordinated facts and making a nice model which will into which all these seemingly unrelated facts fit in very perfectly. There is no doubt that the power of imagination and inductive logic are very well developed. This has to be, it must be because of Sanatan Dharma. It can't be anything else because this is the only thing that distinguishes us from other places. So we have this knack, but along with this knack comes a very big disadvantage. That we don't have the habit of concentration. That the Western ideology gives, that with the reductionist thinking, They can concentrate on very small things. They can concentrate on details. Can't. We simply can't. Why was Tendulkar such a great batsman? Because he was he used to concentrate on details. We are told stories about how he used to practice a particular angle at which he held the bat the whole day long for a particular kind of delivery. That's what I mean by paying attention to detail. As I said, the general you know, feel-good feeling is all very nice. This is not really... Chinese are not saying it's all very nice. They're saying it's all very horrible. Let's see what we can do about it. See, the more we stand in places and say, hey, this is great. Science, very good. We are doing this. We are doing that. Don't you know? We are... What have you done that really helps in a big way? Hmm? I'll tell you something. 
you showed so many pictures of so many people coming to your institute this i tell to the people in the bosnian they have invited me and all i have come i am speaking but once again you know when you something upsets you you have to say it if we spent less time money effort energy thinking about nobel prizes and who won them we will get, go and get a lot of them ourselves this is what i meant thought and action no concentration it's not very important that some nobel laureate came and said that acharya was very good we know he is very good we don't need him to come and tell us don't we know he is good he is different i mean i once had the opportunity to visit your lab in darjeeling also in madam gram and shamnagar agriculture see this is we need another revolution like the green revolution of ms swaminathan this country is crying for an agricultural revolution and it is a revolution that must play up our diversity not play it down acharya was very particular i think that's because he grew up in a small town in bengal that this is an incredibly diverse country you cannot homogenize it and just say no we have a huge monolith of 1.4 billion people no wrong naipal said that we are a nation of a million mutinies i will say we are a nation of 1.4 billion mutinies each one of us thinks different very good but then you must bring in that western discipline this indiscipline is coming out in this wretched twitter and facebook and those tv debates now i call them wretched because i feel that you know that of course older people like as we simply switch off and we don't watch them but there are people who you know watch them avidly they have a really corrupting influence on the minds of youngsters today i see you are all teachers this teaching teaching come research is one of the noblest professions because you have an opportunity to do something that no one else has you can mold mind of a young person in a very constructive way only a teacher and a researcher has this power yes i call it a real power all my life i have avoided these directorships and vice chancellorships for this reason because wo to administrative job hai kuch ias officer can come and some of our universities today you need an ips officer ias won't do wo law and order problem to ho gaya so you you have the power to mold a young brain and make that person a responsible citizen of this country why are all our young people running away why do they go away why are they not staying here because we the teachers are not doing our job and don't forget i have used this word what does the bos institute owe them we owe science and we owe society something why do we owe them because among the people who get their salaries from the government of india the faculty members of the central institutions like the bos institute are extremely highly paid in fact i would say the salaries we get they are obscenely high for the work that we are doing if in a company style somebody had to do a cost analysis of all of us no professor sarkar even in the so called famous iits icers central universities bos institute so many institutes you do a cost analysis on these faculty people the government is paying all of us they are taking us in good trust and good faith no matter what government it was right from 
no matter which party which coalition doesn't matter even non governments we have had several one thing is that this financial support for science scientists the idea of science this i mean we are a poor country in the end so they cannot fund us like we are in germany or usa or japan we can help the country to get rich so that then they can start paying us even better and the science can get even better because don't forget that the other thing which acharya didn't quite handle in many of his writings and readings a very sad fact of life maybe he felt so sad maybe he knew this and never said it the best science comes from the richest countries and i say this with a certain amount of deliberation wonderful science was coming out from india the same bharat varsha when we were a rich country chemists in the audience will know i hope they know if they don't know i think they, they're missing something that this metal zinc which is a highly reactive metal was identified first as a metal obtained in a pure form nearly 1000 years ago in places in rajasthan some of those furnaces and all still exists it took the europeans another 5 century centuries they didn't know even what zinc was and we had the pure stuff in our hands basil valentine in switzerland alchemist he even he just called it a bastard metal they they thought zinc was not a metal because it was too brittle and so they didn't even want to call it metal i mean the i have told this story because everybody knows the story of the iron pillar we've heard it ad nauseam so i don't want to talk about that so when we were a rich country we were actually doing science you need money you need equipment and more than equipment you need working equipment yesterday one big place in bangalore is all been washed out by floods completely gone simply because some three drains came there you know half the city of a place that virtually is my hometown chennai is under water simply because some storm water drains were not full and of course newton's law of gravity works so the water is flowing in a direction reverse to what it is supposed to flow and strange parts of the city are getting flooded even though there is no rain i mean you see this is the theater of the absurd so it is scientists who have to speak we are the conscience keepers of society we should be ahead of the rest of society we should not take the cue from society see today and now today and always why just today right from the beginning we have scientists who just want who are just trying to gauge what the politician in delhi is thinking so most of the time and energy goes in that so then they just like to repeat the same thing now i know people in india don't like churchill but who was churchill scientific advisor in the darkest days of the second world war lord beaverbrook and so this man could tell churchill things that he didn't like even saying this won't work that won't work now suppose uh, he had said ha ha ji huzur sure 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 we'll do all these things swastika would be have been flying on top of buckingham palace that's all see i'm sorry sometimes you have to tell these nasty things in a direct way and fault is also with the politicians you know if the scientist says something that he or she doesn't like they have a tendency to say this fellow is a bad scientist to throw him out and bring somebody else the fault is there on both sides so when i say society and 
scientists scientists need to do something for society but society also has to give a fair deal to the scientist and society doesn't do a give a fair deal to the scientist you will have things like this aryan physics of hitler then this latest islamic science which some people like hood boy and all are doing then lysenko and jd bernal and you know all, all these strange things will start happening when society doesn't give scientists enough space and in turn the scientists must be aware and especially in the india of today i tell you india of today is in a real churn we don't know where we are going actually we don't even know where we came from if we don't know where we came from and we don't know where we are going then what's left then everybody lives each day just as a separate entity chalo by the end of the day if i am okay then i'm happy you can't have 1.4 billion people living like this and i tell you we are we should be ahead we cannot be behind i'll mention the name of another very controversial personality because those who know me know that i love to mention the names of controversial personalities the margaret thatcher you love her you hate her this example is of particular relevance to us because she was a chemist she was a scientist and in fact she started her career with a person who was responsible for the field of crystal engineering which is something where i had made major contributions later gerhard schmidt was her supervisor in oxford when she was a ba student So she was a chemist, and she was a bench chemist in a company. And good scientists always have a sense for the practical, as I told you from Pasteur and all that. In fact, Prof. Sarkar didn't mention. People might have said he's saying this guy got his PhD in '76, and then he got started in Hyderabad in '79. What was he doing in between? See, I was working for one of the largest. chemical companies in the world eastman kodak company in rochester so i was working with them as a research chemist and that gave me a keen sense for the practical and for sarkar knows many others know that much of my work has been geared towards the practical world because unless you make yourself you see it is not saying that these are the government policies now you start doing scientists have to do on their own why are we paid so much we are paid so much because unlike in other professions we have to set our own goals when you become a regular salaried person in some somebody else tells you this is a profession where we don't have a boss you know i tell many people i've told many people hardly anybody takes my advice the day you become a professor a full professor i tell them you have now reached the stage where if you don't want to you never have to stand before a committee again this is a serious thing i am saying here professor means what to profess we are different we are different from other professions we are paid and we are paid so much by the government of india simply because they want people to say what it is we had a disastrous episode about 10 15 years ago about this what are those genetically modified crops bt brinjal and all that you know what happened in bt brinjal the then government actually knew that these things were bad for india and they wanted the scientists to say that the scientist fellows big high powered committee a committee of this committee of that academy of this they said no 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 we can't say all that because government will not be happy so they produced a doctored report some crazy report saying no no it's all great gm crops correct gm crops so the you can't in the in the long run you can't blame politicians bureaucrats it's easy to blame bureaucrats it's easy to blame politicians but you know physician you know heal thyself i think scientists of the boss institute should worry more about all this 
they really should, you know. Today I find I'm in a situation where I found, I've seen in post institutes, so many other places, scientists going to court about this and that. I got this, I didn't get that. So go to court. What will the courts do for you? As they say, the Supreme Court is right because it is the last. It is not the last because it is right. So what will the court do? It will just look at the provisions of the law as they stand on that day and it will say something. And if the country has come to a state when scientists and administrative people in government institutions feel like rushing to court for any old thing, it's a, it's a sad day indeed. And you see, we are not then living up to what Acharya said, to what Tagore said, Vivekananda. What was Vivekananda saying? I mean, the whole idea of neo Hinduism. Vivekananda, Radha Krishna, what were they all saying? They were all struggling with the same question. What aspect of the West do we take? What aspect do we discard? What aspect of our civilization do we keep? What do we discard? Actually, you know, if you look carefully at our religion, it's all there. What is it? Why do we have Shruti and Spriti? The Spriti you can go on discarding at every stage. Even already from Bose's era to today's era, there are things that you can discard. What was relevant to Bose and to Sarkar and to Tagore in terms of, say, Bengal, India and so on? Forget their universal ideas, which go very, very high and which are true for all time. But some of the local things that which they stood for, you even take Tagore. He was a strong believer in diversity. When he was asked to deliver the Convocation University of Calcutta University, I think 36, 37, sometime around there. Kamprasad Mukherjee, who was the VC, called him. He gave the convocation address in Bengali. I believe even Shamprasad Mukherjee was a bit nervous. He said, how can you do that? Tagore said no. And then later on, Mukherjee himself started this idea of PhD thesis in Bengali. I think such things are excellent ideas. You see, today you don't want a whole generation of people who know neither English well nor Bengali well. This is what has happened. See, ye to sab problem sirf educationist ka problem hai. This is not a problem for the government. These are things that we should be thinking about, we should be doing. We should be initiating, right? We are not the people who are going to be able to pass that law in parliament. But that is our duty. When we have an advisory committee, that advisory committee should really advise and not care a jot whether your advice is taken or not. Once you are given that advice, it's gone. You are not part of it anymore. There is no loss of face if the advice you give fairly and honestly in a committee is not taken. You have done your job, bus. The fellow who has to decide whether to take it or not will also do a sincere job because he has many other things to balance. Hopefully. So if he does his job and if everybody keeps doing their job, is what Bose wanted in the end. And so then, then what will happen is this tension instead of being a destructive tension. His whole life as I see it is all about this. I mean, I, again, my, I come back again to agriculture and diversity. India is so very different. Some place I know in Kashmir, lavender, rose, these are all huge multi-billion dollar industries. Just rose industry alone. You know that little country called Bali, the fringes of the world almost is the rose oil capital of the world. Madagascar is the capital of vanilla in the world. Kenya, 
is now the flower powerhouse of the world. It has beaten Holland. All these countries are exploiting their diversity. If you say the whole country is only growing rice and wheat, we will find ourselves in the problem today. Why do you want to homogenize? You know, okay, take saffron. That's also, I mean, Kashmir is blessed place. In term, blessed means not with the view and all that. But Four o'clock. It's also nice. But in terms of the economic potential of that state, uh, these are the, uh, we, have, we have got, you know, here, uh, I told you, you have got three places. Bose was wanting to develop this modern agriculture. As I said, Shamnagar, Darjeeling and Madhyam Gram. Your director mentioned cloud research and all, which is very nice. But do you know how much money is to be made through the tea industry? There are varieties of tea that cost 50,000 rupees a kilo today. And Japanese people are coming private fellows to certain farms near Darjeeling and buying it at this rate. Why can't the Bose, I'm told the Bose Institute even has some lands there, private lands owned by JC Bose. I mean, you look at Madhyam Gram, nobody even knows that it exists. It is barely a kilometer from the airport. We've all seen a million times. When we come out from the airport, instead of turning left, you please turn right, then you will be right in Madhyam Gram. Now, what is that big piece of land doing there? You know, they're just growing some coconut palms or something, I heard. I mean, these are the places where they should be doing real research. Once again, the green revolution it prevented us from a famine condition. We came out of that. That was the general. Now, I want you scientists of Bose Institute to go into the specific Go for high value things and for that you need very, very, very good science. You can't just do it by dreaming about rice and wheat. Sorry, it won't work that way. And so you see, we find ourselves in a very peculiar but also very challenging situation. The country is in a churn. The conflict between the home and the world continues. The conflict between East and West continues. It is not Huntington's clash of civilization. It is not the West versus Islam at all. I don't even view that as a civilizational war. The real conflict today is the conflict between the nation state and the civilizational state. China has done it. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm saying, mentioning China again and again. What prevents us from doing it? And sorry, this civilization has nothing to do with religion. Absolutely nothing. That is the biggest misnomer that these Twitter and these TV debates try to foster. I mean, Bengal itself, undivided Bengal, I'm talking. Partition mein kya tha? 57% Muslims, 43% Hindus. You know, I think actually I'm now going somewhere else and way beyond Bose's time, but partition itself was something that has affected not just you Bengalis, but it has affected the whole country. And one must never feel that that way, you know, when, yes, I think everybody in the country knows that you people and the people of Punjab have suffered in ways that we have not suffered in the rest of the country. It is, I totally disabuse yourself of that notion if you feel others don't feel with you and feel along with you. So I think these are things that we should think about because these are things that Bose never had to think about. If somebody had told Bose or Vivekananda that this would be two provinces, they might have said, huh, vaguely we, we feared something, but we didn't know that something like this would actually happen. <coughs> this is the challenge, you know, to bring up a new generation of students and researchers who don't start worrying, you know, which thing, which color do you wear, which was what do what food do you eat, you know, what uh, what thing do you do, and you know, 
that way we will all become like clowns and you know performing monkeys we won't be like rational researchers and in that sense we would be a, a serious disappointment to this great man who has set up i don't think you should firstly you should start publicizing that you have got seven campuses i am standing here right in the middle of the oldest and i think the most famous one this is the main campus where i am standing and speaking to you from but there are six others now tell me which institute in this which lab which university in this country i know we are a crazy country but imagine seven campuses of one place i mean mr director the first thing i would do is i will emphasize to the dst that yes we are different both institute is different it is different from cultivation and sn both all the other dst institutes in your same place emphasize that difference show them that you are different and show them that because of this difference you can make a real big jump and contribution so this then is the real challenge which i place before you the faculty the students and the non teaching administrative staff of this great institution which has been left to us and you know, of the seven campuses three were his personal property i think one bc roy gave and then some one something you have acquired recently or moving into a let this move to this new unified campus take you from thought to action finally finally there has been too much of thought and too little action and i think this is you should make this jump now so that finally jc bose has the feeling that ha huh, these people have finally begun to understood what i have been trying to say all my life thank you very much indeed ladies and gentlemen it's been a real pleasure talking to you and uh, i wish you all all very well you know wish you the best and hope that things go okay for you in these very anxious times things are not at all okay and yet we must continue to behave and do and mostly act as if things are okay so that is another another challenge and as i said it's 45 minutes instinctive body clock so i'm exactly done at the exact time and in a lecture like this obviously there will be no questions and i figured that out when i planned the lecture as i started speaking thank you so much indeed once again may i request the chairman to summarize professor desi raju's talk sir the doubt set it is very interesting that he was a critic he was a critic that what bose perceived and what we should have done we failed to do those things and still we have time so that we can rectify i can follow the proper path the science is definitely societal need based and that is the history that if we trace whether you talk about pastur or heber and there are several others that he mentioned that these are the discoveries made for the need of the hour at that time for the country for the people and so science develop in that way that is the journey the time when bos came at that time it was just in india that was the renaissance period and then he first realized that the science is universal education is universal at that time and that is the reason that he wanted to do something deliverable and was professor 
Deshi Raju correctly and nicely summarized that it would be very difficult for an ordinary brain to opt for from physics to physiology. It's just get so fast change. The another aspect that what he focused today, we are very much, very much involved, that is worshiping. If there is some in any 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 works of life, if there's someone who is very good, then instead of following his deed, the, the way he delivered, we want to worship him. It's the wrong way, completely. And it's, it is true. Today, we have so many meetings and deliberation and not action that nobody is interested to do or to act. That is the thing. Now, this is something very important. Diversity with discipline or indiscipline today that one should one should try to understand and the, the ugliest part of this science game today that what he pointed out is to please just the appeasement. He wanted to please. Once you are a professor, you need not do anything. You can, you, you, you simply work. That is the thing. But then still we are trying to do some appeasement with all the time, sir, 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 sir. The entire thing are going to the completely drain. The visitors come and they, they certify. He correctly pointed out to my great amusement whether Acharya requires any certificate today that he was a great person, but that is the habit. That is the simple that the, we, 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 we believe in this type of worship. He simply said, we have to look to China. It was, it was in the opium diplomacy, it was completely gone. But then slowly, slowly with all ups and done, it took care of its past glory. And today is economically, it's a giant. So this is something that one should try to understand. And he, he very clearly conveyed the message to us that what should be the goal of both institute or other institute of similar type. We have enough money and we have enough space and the mind is also there. Otherwise, why Indians, they go abroad and then they do their best because the conducive atmosphere and that is the thing that one should need not fear, as Tagore already said. So one need not fear and one can do, one can deliver the best. And that is the thing that uh, uh, Professor Desiraju summarized to us is a nice way today that this type of thing we must follow so that we can we can do a better uh, better uh, deliverable science to the society in the need of the hour okay now based on that let me talk about little bit about the great indian polymath physicist biologist biophysicist botanist archaeologist and writer. It is interesting to note that as Professor Desi Raju mentioned, he is coming from, Acharya both was coming from a very little village, nevertheless, nevertheless, his family was a well-to-do family and at that time the pattern was that they could have sent their word to English school, but Professor Bose's father sent his son to a vernacular school, ordinary school, 
where Professor Vos, he writes that they were my playmates who are the, the son of a Muslim attendant of my father sat on my right side and the son of a fisherman sat on my left. I listened spellbound to their stories of birds, animals, and aquatic creatures. Perhaps these stories created in my mind a keen interest in investigating the working of nature. That is the developmental stage and that one should try to understand that the creativity is going to start there, to love or to see nature. Then further he wrote, when I returned home from school accompanied by school fellows, my mother welcomed and fed all of us without discrimination. Although she was an orthodox old fashioned lady, it was become of my childhood friendship with them. I never realized that there existed a problem common to the two communities, that is Hindus and Muslims. So it was it was as back as during those times. So he nurtured, he just that is the reason he, he could he could give the idea that how from nature he didn't distinguish between living and non-living. So his work today we can appreciate that he was referring to all those smart molecules. Today we talk about smart molecules. His idea was based on the idea of remote and mobile phones. I'm not going to go for the scientific things that all of us we are aware of, we have read, but simply I'm going to talk about a little bit of this, that the living and non-living, that was very important. Uh, the point of focus that he tried to understand and a simple, story that I, I could get it and I heard it from my teacher that it was Professor Raman when he wanted to assemble his apparatus he was he was in search of a person who can have a have a um, iron mold to to press all his equipment together to the framework he was searching for a person and ultimately he approach Professor Bose. Professor Bose has his schoolmate, one of his schoolmate, a blacksmith, all the time who designed his apparatus. And Professor Bose loaned or asked his schoolmate to help Raman to get his equipment fabricated in a nice way. And that Raman took his help. Finally, Raman wanted to pay him money. And Professor Bose was a little bit annoyed. He said, no. He did this job because of this scientific passion. Uh, he, he won't be, he, 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 please, you don't, don't or offer any money. So these were those days, these are those days that uh, how science progress. I, I know very well. Today, if I have some problem and the next lab has got something and if I approach, the person would be nicely talking, yes, experimental science I'm talking, I can provide you, but then there will be delay tactics and finally it will be saying, if it is something like art seeking, though every day art seeking things are not going to happen. Then the person would be trying to say, can I associate with this work? Now, how it is possible you own one equipment and simply loaning it to my use and how you can say that your name should be incorporated in that authorship. These are some of the problems today we face all the time. There is another important thing that about the most characteristic thing is not only that whether it is a physics, biophysics, he was a prolific writer. Probably he was the first uh, scientific writer, the science writer, real science, dealing with um, dealing with um, 
the uh, Bengali literature. I don't know that whether in other literature at that time uh, there was something which could be compared with the, uh, this type of scientific fiction writing. And one important thing is that at that time there was one, um, one all of a sudden what happened? A storm came and, and then all of a sudden it stopped. It was long, long ago. I mean, I, I can't remember any more the time. And it was flashed in the in the in, in the newspaper that is runway cyclo. Where it where it's gone. And Professor Bose took this idea nicely and he elaborated the way how it is done. And there was a competition about the oil company to promote oil, and he bagged the first prize for that. That what was the person was there, as the wave came, someone in the ship just out of fairness, he just threw his oil to the water, and there's the film of oil that come down the wild. Uh, rough sea, and then the storm was uh, come down. That, that, these are some of the things, and these were these were nicely put together, and with a collection of a book in in Bengali that is called Abhakta. So in Abhakta also he questioned very important question to the Ganges that where from you are coming, your origin. Normally in mythology, you feel that your your origin is from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the Lord Shiva's head, and you are flowing from there to the sea. The question is coming that from the sea, it's the environmental issue that from sea it is just a circular going back to vapor to Himalayan once more back. So these are the environmental question that was boiling with his ideas all the time. So these are some of the small, small bits bit that I can I can recollect that why I read a, a long, long ago, and and I am I am very fortunate today that I I had been to Karlsruhe where I I visited the place where. Harsh what the Harsh Tew, the predecessor of Professor Bose, and here I can see that the the work of Bose, where from Harsh it was a very long, long um, microwave or this the radio wave, and Bose used very very narrow band. That is the thing. I'm today I'm not interested to talk about the work that what he did and what he faced the problem. He was very much Indian. That's all you know. And the differentiation created by the then British that offering him lower salary with the better qualification, he refused. But there he didn't Data. He was teaching and doing his research for continuous three years, and the British government finally, finally, yielded, and then the British completely paid his all the salary back, and that was the thing that he he, he could fight in that way, uh, and with this with this. Meagre salary at that time, he continued his this type of research, which is not a repetition of research all the time, it's new. And when you know that there is a proverb called when there is when there is will, there is way. When you need, and it's a good need, it is something that someone is going to help. At that time, we know the history says at that time, Sister Nivedita, Margaret Noble came. And then she helped. She helped him with the money and other things. So he could continue 
and of course he could build this this uh, institution which by himself he said it is not a research institution it is a temple of learning and that's the name he made it Bashu Bigyan Mandir. It is a mandir, it is a temple and where uh, it has a rich heritage and personally I feel that it should be as Professor Desiraj said it has got entirely different bondage, different spirit by which it was created and the people who are involved there they must they must follow uh, the the ideal of Acharya Jagadish Chandra Thank you sir I will conclude this Thank you Professor Sharkar Thank you for chairing the session and also for your engrossing address. We also thank Professor Desi Raju for his insightful lecture. So your words are sure to encourage introspection in all of us. You have reminded us of the need for discipline so that thoughts can be effectively translated into action. Thank you, sir, once again, from all of us at Bose Institute. The time has come to proudly recognize and honor the real torchbearers of Bose Institute, our PhD students on whose hard labor and dedication we stand tall. Each year, we recognize their contribution with awards. One award, the Professor Shamadash Chatterjee Outstanding Student Award, is given for research in the area of physical and environmental sciences. The other two awards are for research in biological sciences, the Sir Nil Rotan Sharkar Prize and the Professor B.B. Bishash Outstanding Student Award. Sir Nil Rotan Sharkar was not only an eminent physician, but also an educationist and philanthropist. This year, the winner of the Sir Nil Rotan Sharkar Prize is Reyoshi Mojundar of the Division of Bioinformatics. Professor Birendra Bijoy Bishash was a noted biochemist of international repute. He was the founding chairman of the Department of Biochemistry at Bose Institute and also served as the Institute's director. This year's Professor B.B. Bishash Outstanding Student Award goes to Onindo Dotto of the Department of Biophysics. Professor Shamadash Chatterjee was a creative experimental physicist who made important contributions in the area of cosmic rays. The winner of the Professor Shamadash Chatterjee Outstanding Student Award is Sreyan Raha of the Department of Physics. Under normal circumstances, we would have had these students come up and accept certificates from our director, but Unfortunately, this year, we will not be able to do that. But I'm sure on behalf of all of you, I congratulate these proud student winners. Well-deserved effort. Thank you all. May I now request Professor Topun Kumar Dotto, co-chairman of the Foundation Day Celebration Committee 2021, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon. It is a great privilege to offer a vote of thanks on behalf of the Bose Institute fraternity on the 150th, the 105th Foundation Day of Bose Institute and 82nd Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture. And that too, during the commemoration of the 75th year of independence of India, Ajatka Amrit Mahotsa. To begin with, first of all, on behalf of Bose Institute, I would like to extend our most heartfelt thanks to Professor Gautam Desi Raju, today's speaker of 82nd Acharya J.C. Bose Memorial Lecture. Thank you, sir, for your enchanting talk on a very fundamental topic and talking about 
so many hard truths about science and society and reminding all of us about our responsibilities towards our society. The talk was indeed inspirational and it was great listening to you. Thank you, sir, once again. Here I would like also to thank Professor Shabbashachi Sharkar for kindly accepting our invitation to preside over this program. Thank you, sir, being with us and would like to express our gratitude for your valuable words on this auspicious occasion. <clears throat> I also take this opportunity to extend gratitude to our director, register, and all the members of Foundation Day Committee for their hard efforts in different ways to organize this event during the persisting hard time. On behalf of the Foundation Day Committee, I would also like to extend my thanks and appreciation to all the staffs and students of Bose Institute who did marvelous jobs at the ground level to make it a grand success. Lastly, thank you all once again for being with us. It is indeed a great pleasure and wish all of you a very good health. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dottu. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we have come to the end of today's program. May I request this assembly to kindly rise for the national anthem. <laughs> Thank you all.